Just this week and even a little bit over the past month, we've had a substantial price drop in Bitcoin, but this time not caused by the actions of a lone whale or some other headline reaction. This might actually be a somewhat healthy price, price drop. And then, like we called it last week, there was the first crypto IPO this week, so that's very exciting. We are, of course, joined by Dave Zeiler for this week's Crypto Recap. He's our Monday morning's cryptocurrency expert. Thanks for being here, Dave. Always good to be here. So let's jump into the big news. Bitcoin is down, what, almost 20% this week? It's about 17% over 17%. the past week. Um, if you go back a month, it's about 30%. So it's quite a significant drop in a short span of time. So what's happening is uh, over the past week, unlike all these other causes we've seen, the, the buzzword this week has been minor capitulation. And so people might wonder what the heck could that be and what does that have to do with the price of Bitcoin? But the miners are the Bitcoin miners. They're the people who keep the whole system running. They're the ones who are creating the new Bitcoins. And a minor capitulation is a situation where the price starts to go down as it has over the past month. They start to get squeezed um, because when you're a miner of Bitcoin, you have to sell some of the Bitcoin in order to basically pay your bills, but also you have to keep buying new equipment because the equipment becomes obsolete on a regular basis. So you have to constantly being uh, replace it with new stuff. So what happens is the price starts to go down. They start to get squeezed. These are not every miner, but it's usually the smaller ones who uh, don't have a, a, the kind of resources that some of the big operations do. And so what they'll do is in order to stay in operation, they'll have to sell more Bitcoins. They may have a, a reserve of some Bitcoins so they start selling more of those and that adds to the supply and it just puts even more pressure on the Bitcoin price. It keeps going lower. What happens is it uh, becomes a feedback loop and eventually a lot of these miners have to stop. They will have to shut their mines down. They may go out of business. They may not. Sometimes they can just shut everything down for a while. But at that point, then everything stops. The pressure stops. The price stabilizes. Um, these kind of events are actually not unusual. We usually see at least one a year. The last one was in December of last year. And they're actually a healthy uh, thing to happen for the Bitcoin ecosystem because what it does is it, it kind of flushes the more inefficient miners out of the system. And that's one of the things that the Bitcoin system, the way the software is designed, it's very good at keeping everything efficient and, and on track. And it's been working for over 10 years. And so <laughs> you can't argue with that. What happens in the past, we've noticed in the previous uh, minor capitulation scenarios, is that after one is over, the price will come up a little bit, it'll stabilize for a while, and then eventually, after you've had a couple of these events, uh, there's some people who on Twitter who've been talking about a pattern where they see three consecutive minor capitulation events, and then after the third one is when you're set up for a huge rally. That's what we've seen in the past. You can't say for sure it's going to happen, but when we have the halving where the Bitcoin rewards get halved in May, that'll again cut the supply and we're seeing more and more uh, people get interested. So there's going to be more buyers next year. You could very well see a big rally start, you know, at some point around there or maybe just after like the middle of next year. Certainly by the end of next year, I see a big rally coming when all these forces kind of converge. Great. That's, I mean, exciting stuff for anyone who's in Bitcoin now. So it's kind of a, a bit of a hint of, hey, we've got a price pullback. This might be the time to start looking at getting in before a big rally. Oh, yeah. So moving on to uh, exciting news. Last week, we talked about uh, the first cryptocurrency companies IPOs and in the US market especially. And then right after we talked about it, we had our first IPO. And it was a company you talked about as well. Yeah, there were three Chinese companies that were filed with the SEC for an IPO in the United States. And one of them is called uh, Canaan Creative. And they actually went public yesterday, which was Thursday, on the NASDAQ. And they started trading and their uh, price was set at $9. And of course, starts out really good. The initial half hour, it went up like 40%, but after that, it went down. It actually went below the offer price. It was below $9 most of the day. It ended up closing at $8.99. Today, it's already opened. It was much lower. It was actually below $8 for a while before I came in here to do this. It was around $8.12, so it's still down like 10%. 
Um, so this is when I was talking about it last week. I said, when you see any of these crypto IPOs come on, these companies that are crypto based and have an IPO, stay away, stay on the sidelines because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be very volatile and it's very dangerous for investors to try to jump in on these things in the earliest days. And that's exactly what we're seeing here is you're seeing a lot of crazy volatility and it's the sort of thing where you just don't want to get involved in it because you could lose a lot of money. Well, that's uh, certainly good to keep in mind. And uh, we'll we'll be tracking how these IPOs play out over the next uh, few months. And yep. if- uh, There'll be more. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be more. And if any of them start to really take off or anything, we'll be sure to bring it up here. Yep. So thanks for joining us, Dave. Appreciate the insights as always. And we'll catch you next week. See you then.